Okay guys, I'm gonna go ahead and go through the process of putting the berry, this bearing, uh, a bearing in this aftermarket $25 clutch lever for the KTM um, and do all the other modifications as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out. Um, I showed in my other video that, um, what the heck, that broke. Uh, I showed in my other video that uh, my bearing is a nine millimeter wide outside diameter, five millimeter inside diameter, and three millimeters thick. And let's see here, parts are flying. Let's see where's the bearings at. Here's an example of one of the bearings right here. Focus. Nope. Anyways, whatever. That's the bearing right there. I don't have to drill it because this um, has an insert that you take from the, um, so there'll be plenty of slack room. Um, so I've got a nine millimeter um, checking reamer and so I don't need to drill the hole. All I need to do is mount this in the milling machine um, and go down uh, mill with a nine millimeter checking reamer uh, three millimeters deep. All right, so we'll move over to the milling machine and uh, set up and we'll make our, uh, we'll enlarge our hole. Okay, so we're over at the mill. We just need to find a flat place to put this to secure it where it won't be uh, moving all around. Um, so I'm just looking for a flat enough spot and this is flat enough here. Uh, so I will clamp that down there. Yeah, that's going to work right there, I believe. Yes, that's clamped down. We'll go ahead and set up uh, our um, reamer to center on top of that hole. And then we'll go down three millimeters. All right, to show you my setup here, I've got the mill, uh, the, the milling machine lined up with the uh, checking reamer centered over the hole. I've checked it from a couple of different angles. And to get my depth, I've got uh, my gauge there, roughly about one and a half turns on the dial there. Um, this has got a camper on the inside where the other holes I've drilled. So I gotta kinda fake it until I make it kind of deal. Um, I can still see I'm a little bit off center because I'm seeing when I push this down, you can kind of see it. I don't know if you can kind of see it there, but uh, the reamer is going to go in that way. So a little bit more fine adjustment, and then we'll go ahead and kind of trial and error down to three millimeters deep. Okay, so I'm right on top of it. I know I need to go this way just a little bit. No, I'm too far. Wow, there's a lot of slop in there. Okay, now I'm centered on that hole. All right, so um, looking at my dial, which I can't put them both in right now, but I'm just making a note of where it is when it starts to cut. And so I'm going to go down one turn um, on the dial, and then I'll test fit the bearing. So what I'm looking for is to be flush. That's what I'm looking for. Let me go grab that bearing. I'll be right back. So luckily the head of this bolt, I think will go in that hole. No, it won't. Dang it. All right. So that means I got to fiddle with it. And I can see that I still have a lot to go. All right. So we'll go another half turn on the dial that is. Just test that out. All 
right. So if we look at that, that's pretty flush right there. So now we have to do is flip this to the other side um, and uh, offset for, go ahead and uh, put the reamer down uh, for the other side. So this is gonna be a little bit more challenging setup and that's just because of all the dimensional changes on the back of this block. Um, you can see that this protrudes and then this protrudes here. Um, so I'm thinking, yeah, all I have to do, I don't know if you can kind of see it there, I've got plenty of clearance, 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 um, yeah, so now I can just go ahead and, and bind that down like that. Using these parallel bars to get me where I need to be. All right, I'll get that clamp down close. Film a lot more of the back of my hand for you guys because I know you all enjoy watching that. All right. Okay, so now for centering, centering up. Oh man, out of space. Right over that. You know, one of the things with filming, especially here with the mill, it's just trying to get where my hand, back of my hand is not in frame, and then you can see what's going on, and it's just God, it's just really tough. Everything's so down and tight in there. Um, I can see I'm just going to have to move this over here because my table. I know you, I know you, I don't know if I back up. You saw so I'll show you kind of the table's all the way to the left. This vice is kind of in the way. I could take it off. You know, I need to do like setup work. I'm usually so anxious just to get the project done that I really don't want to set up. I don't want to invest all I just want to I just want to get it done. But so this is a kind of a situation where it's all awkward, right? Cuz I'm too lazy to take the vice off to so I got to move it all the way over there so I can mount it down and <clears throat> if I would just have a little bit more patience to do the correct setup, then this would be a lot easier project overall. Um, and I might even get it, be able to get the camera in there where y'all could see a little bit better. When I cut down on this one, um, it's going to be one of the things I'm going to have to deal with here is it's all, there's already a little bit of a recess. So I have to kind of make a decision. Is it going to bearing going to be flush to the top or am I just going to put it flush in the hole? If I put it flush in the hole, it'll want to slide out. There's just lots of kind of decisions here. I'm just going to kind of play it by ear and just see how it turns out. Man, there's a lot of slop in that. Again, I'm just eyeing this up. Because this hole... So, I've got another video out there where I'm doing the... Uh, I'm doing the uh, brake, li brake lever. And you don't use such a small bearing on that. There's actually a half inch uh, bearing outside diameter. Um, and so... Uh, I posted that on Facebook. I didn't paste, post it on YouTube just because it didn't turn out the way I wanted. Uh, anyways, so these are smaller. Anyway, my point being is the half inch is pretty easy because, see, I have my chucking reamers right there. And I got one that's 4985, which is perfect for that half inch bearing. Um, and I don't know if that's because just using the chucking reamer uh, increases more slop. But I had to buy these millimeter reamers, and I bought the you know the Chinese set. Um, so the Chinese set is uh, I don't know if it's real accurate. You know, I pulled the micrometer out. Sorry, the vernier calipers out to take a look at it, um, and uh, and it seems a bit oversized, and the bearing seems a bit undersized. So the nine millimeter bearings. I can't get a quite tightest fit. I suppose if I went out and got, you know, a little bit undersized my nine millimeter uh, reamer, I could get a, a little bit better fit. But, you know, trying to find highly precise reamers in metric in Amazon in the U.S., it's just hard to do. And the other thought was to go ahead and just actually put this in a lathe and spin it, but I couldn't figure out a way to get the whole parallel to the lathe, you know, without, again, I'm trying to get this done in a hurry. So, I couldn't figure out a way to do it, you know, quickly. Anyways, so here we go. We're going to go ahead and go down. Uh, we'll probably go about on my dial indicator, which is here you can see it on the post. We're going to go down about one turn, uh, starting from about right there.
and then we'll test the bearing try to get flush with the top surface the top uh, surface and just to be specific not this top surface this top surface because it's already recessed a little bit okay we're gonna go down Slowing that reamer down just a little bit. Okay, that's roughly one ton. So I'll bring this up. And I got a bearing here, and I bet that's going to be... Okay, it's a little low. Uh, but, you know, that's what they tell you. You know, to uh, measure twice and cut once, you know, because you can't easily put material back. Uh, anyway, so we're going to have to go with this. That bearing is probably going to float a little bit. Um, when we install it, uh, the good point, the good side is this is up. So being that this is up and the bearing won't want to come down, it will, you know, it will, um, by gravity, it'll kind of want to fall down in there. All right. So let's go back over to the bench and kind of take a look. We'll put the bolt through there and do the spinning. Cause that's always fun. Okay. So we're back over at the bench. We've got, we're going to put the bearings in both sides. There we go. I like that. That's a nice fit. This one, eh, not so much, but we're going to go with that. Um, go ahead and put our bolt in here. And we'll just kind of see the reduction in friction by using the bearing. <clears throat> I don't think you're going to get that kind of spin. Uh, just using the um, what the interference fit and then another point is is that uh, when we actually you know when there's pressure here with the spring pressure for the clutch and the hydraulic pressure um, this will be a uh, the hope is it'll be easier to pull which I think it will be okay so we'll go back and uh, <clears throat> reassemble our, our clutch lever here and we're gonna go ahead and do another change um, this I'm not really happy with this on these they're too long um, can't get it close enough and then the spring hmm, I'm not really happy with the spring either I don't think we really need it anyway this is a five millimeter and uh, I have these uh, let's see here I have these little five millimeters here I picked up at the store I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in there what this does is allows it uh, the lever to go a little bit closer than those stack stock things you know I think the adjustment should have been you know in a place where you can get um, as close as you want you know that's just my opinion but uh, this bolt you know that comes with it it's just too far you know <clears throat> too far out to begin with so I'm trying to give an example of how much distance you can pull out, you know. You know, you may not need it, but I, I, like I said, I think that, you know, the adjustment, <clears throat> in my opinion, ought to be able to come closer. So that's why I'm kind of putting that in there. Um, and then, like I said, I don't care for the spring that much. Um, so uh, let's see here. Put that on there. I just tighten these down uh, where they're stiff. That's what I do. And it kind of has the same effect except for, you know, uh, it doesn't spring back. I don't really care if it doesn't spring back. I mean, I got hand guards on there, so that kind of works for me. <clears throat> I just think, and also here, you know, whenever they engineered this, I don't know what they were thinking, but, you know, it doesn't really give a solid surface. <clears throat> this is just kind of, you know, there's been so much thought put into this, but where even even if I were to use this, it, it bangs into this curve here to start. I mean, you got to get it spun way out, and you get you know then your handles over here, and you can't even get it with your tippy toe tippy fingers, um, you know when it's spun all the way out. So mm, they probably need to change something here, change the angle of that screw or or something. But anyway, <clears throat> it still locks up tight enough. Uh, even though it's just kind of on that bare edge right there. So now I have it set up where it's tensioned. Now I'm just using that spring retaining 
uh, not, I need to go ahead and get the, uh, uh, was it six millimeter, um, a nylon nut to hold it in. But for right now, that's all I have. So we'll go ahead and put this on the bike and give it a shot. Okay. <clears throat> so now we'll go ahead and take the clutch lever off. And there's the other spring and the other, there's a spring on the top side of the clutch lever to take the slack out. So when you take this off, you gotta be careful not to lose that. Okay. Okay. This is that factory KTM bolt. This is that spring. Okay, and here's the bearing modified. Uh, let's see here. You all see all that? Oh, spring. Can't really see, you gotta get all the way down here. Okay, there we go. All right. Okay. See how it just slides in there real easily now? You know, had I, if I didn't have the camera on right now, it would just go right in there. So I'll pause it, then it'll fall right in, and then I'll stop it. All right, so long story short, it worked out perfect, and there were no problems whatsoever, but now we've got a bearing clutch lever. All right. And it's at least 150 times easier to pull, or somewhere close to that. All right, guys, thanks for watching.